Hi, fellow readers. I just read two of the best anti-racism books. One is fiction. It's an awesome book about middle school friends that also paints a picture of what we talk about when we talk about anti-racism. And the other is nonfiction, a sort of guidebook that says how to wake up, take action, and do the work. So the first, the nonfiction, is called This Book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell. What I love about this book, in addition to it being nice to look at, is the way it lays things out step by step. So it tells you what a section is going to have, and then it presents each section, and it gives you nice big heads for everything that you want to look at. So first, this book helps you think about your social identity and how uh, racism fits into identity. It helps you distinguish individual racism, which you may or may not claim from systemic racism, the built-in racism in our culture that makes it harder for black and brown kids to get a fair shake. And it's also actually the same kinds of prejudice that go into play for disabled and, and gender non-conforming kids. Then it offers tips for shaking things up, disruptions, uh, actions, Solidarity moves you can personally take to be anti-racist. Not just non-racist, but anti-racist. It suggests ways to spend your privilege, whether it's the big privilege that people call white privilege, or the small privilege of being light-skinned, black, or not having an accent of any kind, right? Ways to spend your privilege to be an ally in the struggle against racism. It even has activities laid out for you. So if you get the theory, maybe you even love the theory, but you're not feeling it in your bones, it doesn't feel like yours, you might want to turn to a novel. Because if you get a topic on a personal level, you really feel like it's yours. And for that, there is a new novel out I just love called What Lane by Tori Maldonado. Now, this book does not pull any punches. It's not some dreary, you know, unstinting look at the horrors of racism or an unstinting look at the horrors of middle school. It's just a really nice, realistic novel, but it's honest about the way things change in middle school, especially if you're a person of color. So in this novel, the main character is just starting to get that lesson. His name is Stephen. His mom, who's white, calls him mixed, his dad says he might as well call himself black because everybody else will. His, his best friend, Dan, who is white, sometimes calls him Stephen Curry after the best shooter in the NBA, or Miles Morales after the coolest Spider-Man ever. They're friends. In middle school, same as always. But you know, lately Stephen's been noticing that Dan gets a pass for things that get him in nothing but trouble. Dan can explore an alley, he can eat a cookie on the way to the checkout counter. He can play rough without raising an eyebrow. Stephen gets called out every time. Stephen's dad and his black friend Wes try to help Stephen learn how to say, stay safe in a racist world, and that's good. But Stephen feels pressure to pick a lane. And there's a little piece on page 45 of this book that is a little bit about that. Um, we alike. You feel me? Alike, says Stephen. Black, brown. Here we go again. Black. Like my dad says, I'm only black. This feels like my dad saying I need to stay in my lane. So, I should stay in my lane, I ask. The black lane? Nah, bro, I'm saying right in mad lanes, but you're only in one now some grimy hats. <laughs> so Stephen thinks about this and he likes that idea. He would like to make the whole world his lane if he could make his world a little less racist. Read this book to see how he and his friends do just that. How they refuse to stay in a single lane and refuse to let anyone narrow the lanes they're in. How Stephen gets ambushed in a haunted house and friends of all races come to the rescue. How Stephen, Dan, and Wes managed to create a new crowd that's not black kids or white kids 
or mixed kids, but all kinds of kids hanging out together with no room for racism. It's an awesome world. So put yourself in it for a while and have some fun there. And then maybe do some things to make your world a little less racist. Here's to the new world that's coming. Until next time, kids. So long.